Yes, you may not love these parts of your body so much right now, but you definitely want to give those areas a little bit of love every day. Squeeze your squish, you know, because sending hateful energy to these parts of your body is not going to make this process any more fun. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Simone Monet and this is Halo Image and Energy Consulting where we merge the worlds of personal development and personal style to help women who are goal oriented use fashion and style as a tool to help them get to their next best level in life, whatever that may look like for you. So if you want to learn how to use what you've got to get what you want, then just keep watching. So today we're going to be talking all about how to dress your body after weight gain. Dun dun dun! Ugh, yeah, so let me tell you guys, when I'm out there talking to clients or just meeting random women, you know, out on the street, like, this is such a sticking point for them and a sensitive topic because, you know, post-COVID, maybe you have gained some weight. A lot of women are like, oh my gosh, I just spent the whole time eating and drinking and now, like, I don't even know... How to dress for this new body that I have um, or maybe women have had children and they have their kind of post uh, baby body and so it can really be a difficult thing to to deal with and a lot of the times people just end up giving up and living in their sweatpants and their leggings because that's what's most comfortable and um, that's all that fits right now sometimes so um, we're definitely going to address how you can feel comfortable in your new body, dress for the new shape that you have, and really just accentuate the beautiful body that you are in right now. Um, and it's like so funny, it's so fitting for this conversation today because I was definitely trying to squeeze into some tiny little leggings before Pilates today and I broke this nail trying to do that. So definitely we are on brand, we are on topic today. Um, but yeah, definitely before we get started with that, be sure to like and subscribe and um, yeah, let's get started. And I'm sure this is something we're all familiar with, but just to set the scene a little bit, there are so many reasons that we end up in this place, whether it's hormones, stress, having kids, raising kids, mental illness, um, being on a new medication. There's so many reasons that we can gain weight and fluctuate as women. Um, and it sucks. It sucks. We all feel that. It sucks to like have a million different sizes in your closet. That makes it much harder to dress. Um, it's It can be definitely like kind of a, a kick to your confidence a little bit. But I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be so hard while you're in this in-between area, whether you are comfortable keeping the new weight or if you want to lose the weight, there are definitely tips and tricks and ways around um, this rut that you may be feeling like you're in. And all it takes is a little shift in perspective to get to a better place. But actually, you know, so many people have a hard time even getting to that uh, mental shift of perspective because we're kind of avoiding coming to terms with the fact that we're not happy with where we are or that we want to change. And I, you know, I'm just here to say that it's okay to want to evolve. It's okay to want to change um, and become a better version of yourself. Like that doesn't mean that you hate yourself now or you don't love yourself or whatever, or you need to do more self-work. It just means that you acknowledge where you are, you're being real about it, and you're like, hey, I want to do something different, and I'm willing to see things differently, take an extra step, get some help in order to do that. And that's totally okay. And so once you acknowledge that maybe you're not happy where you are and you want to change a little bit, the next step is to just decide. Decide that, yes, I get to have this new body and feel sexy. I get to have a little bit of extra weight on me and feel pretty when I walk outside and feel confident when I'm speaking to people and love my outfit and feel comfortable at the same time. You get to have all these thoughts and all these um, emotions existing at the same time. You get to gain a little weight, acknowledge that you want to change, but also um, enjoy your life and enjoy your style in the moment right now without having to lose the weight. So I just want to let you know that once you just decide that you want to 
try something new and put a little more ex extra effort in, you get to have all the fun and all the confidence and sexy feelings as well. So that's that's why I love fashion and style. Like just with a good outfit, a cinch of the waist, a good heel, you know, a comfortable flowy dress, like you get to have the fun too, just like everyone else, despite whatever is going on with your health or your body. And if you're someone that has decided that you want to like go that extra step, I would definitely highly recommend my color analysis and closet edit package. This is such a fun one that I love doing with my clients. Um, it's in-house. I come to you. We get together. I do a full-blown color analysis on you um, and tell you, you know, your perfect colors, your things to stay away from to help accentuate your best features. Um, I have a couple of videos on my color analysis as well, so you can um, check those out. They're going to be linked up there and down below. And um, with the color analysis, we of course give you a lookbook and a breakdown of all your colors, of your uh, perfect color palette. And um, the closet edit part is also really fun because we take what we learned from the color analysis and then we do also a body um, body typing analysis and figure out what your perfect silhouettes are, what shapes and textures and colors are going to like work well together on your frame. And then we also do try-ons in your closet, like with all the things that you have for work and play. And we figure out what's not working, what is working. Um, we put together some really good outfits of things that you already have. We take photos. Those are going to go in your lookbook as well. And then I also give some personalized recommendations in the lookbook um, about gaps you can fill in your closet of things that you need that are like staple items and some fun items that can really round out your wardrobe and make it easy for you. You know, it gets to be easy. It gets to be really fun and playful. And like a lot of people are just so uh, put off by style and fashion and hair and makeup and stuff because it can seem really daunting if that's not your natural habitat. Um, but that's why me as an image consultant, I'm here to kind of hold that space for you make it easy, give you all the materials like the lookbook and color analysis PDF is so helpful. Literally, it's personalized for every single one of my clients. It has everything you're going to need in there to reference going forward um, on how you can best present yourself and feel most comfortable and confident in your colors and shapes and your accessories and your hair and makeup recommendations. It's so fun. It's definitely one of my favorite things to do. Um, and I love seeing people's reactions when they get the book because it's just like, whoa, it's like even the, the design of the, the actual PDF is very like chic and sexy. So um, I hope you guys enjoy that. But definitely you can book a session with me. I work in the DC, Maryland, Virginia, and New York areas. Um, I can also do all of that online as well. So definitely check that out down below. So let's talk about some actual strategies for dressing your body um, after weight gain. First of all, I just wanna say when we're dressing, yes, we're being comfortable and we're putting clothes in our bodies, but we're making art. And we're also making optical illusions with the colors, shapes, textures, silhouettes that we drape on ourselves. Like we're creating, we're creating illusions on the body to do certain things and accomplish certain goals. And obviously as a stylist, it literally gives me such a thrill to do these things and cre to create these shapes um, and these textures uh, on the body it's so much fun for me and i just want to do that for you as well um but the first thing we're going to talk about is color color is really cool to play with because it can really impact your proportions depending on what color you put where so for example if you are a little bulkier on top like i have really broad shoulders so when I'm trying to balance myself out or minimize that, I definitely don't wanna wear a light color on top and a dark color on the bottom because light colors kind of play with the eye in a way that it makes whatever um, is underneath that color expand. So if I'm wearing a white top on the top and then black on the bottom, my legs are gonna shrink and look smaller, more streamlined, and my broad shoulders are just gonna get broader and my big boobs are just gonna get bigger. So, and then you look even more out of proportion than what you already were. So you definitely want to be aware of where you're placing certain light and dark colors. 
Um, or, you know, if you've gained some weight in your hips and your butt and you want to like accentuate all that juiciness, maybe you wear a pair of um, light white shorts or um, a nice pastel on the bottom and then do like a print or a deeper color on the top so that you can really play up that shape down bottom. Or if you don't have any hips at all and you're trying to create more, that's when you would use a, a lighter color on the bottom. Um, Another interesting thing you can do with color is the monochromatic look. If you're really short like me, I'm like five foot nothing somehow. Um, I love monochrome looks because it creates more of a center point down the body and elongates you, makes you look taller. So if you do a beige look head to toe, camel jacket, um, beige, you know, top underneath, some uh, camel trousers and then a nude cream shoe you're gonna be like like straight down like nice and tall and lean um, and that's really gonna streamline you and make you look a little more slender and tall so monochrome is also a great thing for minimizing uh, the weight gain look next we're gonna talk about shapes um, shapes are really fun to work with structure can be good I know a lot of people are worried about comfort and just feeling you know comfortable and having soft clothing but you know a nice padded shoulder blazer can be really good if you're trying to create more balance um, maybe you have some really narrow shoulders and trying to balance it out with your hips all my like pear-shaped ladies you know what I'm talking about you have a lot of volume at the bottom and you need to create more shape up top a padded shoulder blazer will be really great for you something like this that has a little more volume and puff up top also cre can create some interesting volume and shape you can also create shapes with belts um wrap dresses i mean the diane von furstenberg brand didn't blow up for no reason like she was the creator of the wrap dress and it's something that looks good on literally every woman it cinches you in where you need to be it um you know kind of plays up that natural hourglass shape that women have and want to have um, so a good belt will do you a lot of good. Um, when it comes to shoes, pointed versus round is going to create different things. Um, if you have huge feet and you want to minimize that, you may not want to go with a pointed toe. But if you have long or short legs, you may want to go with an, a pointed toe that also in a shoe that also exposes the ankle. You don't want to cut your ankle off if you're trying to give yourself more height. And just as an example, um, a shoe like this that is nude, it's pointed, and it exposes the ankle. It's gonna give you much more length than a shoe like this. Love these, by the way, so hot. Um, but it kind of cuts you off at the ankle here, and it's kind of more rounded. Um, so you're just accomplishing different things with these two shapes. Also, when it comes to shapes, you know, cutouts were a really big trend. Um, in the past couple years, cutouts on the side and all of that. Um, if you've gained weight recently, you're not going to want to wear a long dress with side cutouts. Like having exposed skin on the side here is going to make you expand. Um, what you would actually rather do is go for a shape that cuts in like this and it's darker paneled on the sides because that darkness is going to shrink you in. Um, also, cargo pants are a really big trend in 2023. I'm seeing them everywhere and like satin and denim and like the normal fabric as well. But, you know, honestly, if you're struggling with uh, weight gain, adding bulk to the, to the kneecap area, <laughs> to the calf area on the sides of your legs is not really going to be that flattering. So honestly, I would avoid that. I would go with the straight leg type of um, cut or um, a palazzo pant, something that just isn't oddly bulky. You want to be more um, straight up and down or like go with the natural curvature of the leg with like a flare or um, a palazzo pant or something like that. Next, we're going to talk about texture. Texture is really, really fun um, to play with. It's actually one of my favorite things. You know, we have like linens, we have cotton, polyester, um, satin, silk, um, if you have, if you're trying to like minimize the lumps and bumps and like bulges, satin and silk are not your friend. Okay. They're not, no, hang it up. <laughs> I mean, if you don't care and you just want to wear it, do it by all means. I do that all the time. Um, but 
it really, the sheen of it exposes every lump, bump, crevice that you have. Really clingy fabrics like spandex. And if it's not, you know, a kind of like, what's the word? Shapewear thing. If it's not shapewear and it's like too tight in spandex, again, you're going to expose all those bumps and bulges and not really working in your favor. Not really going to have you feeling your most confident and your best. So satin is not really your friend. I actually love linen um, when I'm trying to like hide things or just feel comfortable because it's a natural fabric. Um, it's naturally has like a wrinkle to it that is like acceptable. Um, it's billowy, it's flowy. Linen um, pieces of clothing are usually more, not baggy, but they have more room to it because that's the style. Like it's very beachy and flowy and um, you can really get away with a lot and like a white linen shirt tied up in the front. I have so many different variations of that, which I think are so fun and just like easy to wear with a cute jean and a heel or like a nice flat or boot. Really easy, simple, comfortable look. You can even show a little cleavage um, with a, a couple of the exposed buttons at the top and like a cute bralette underneath. There's so many things you can do with a white linen shirt. Maybe I'll do... Um, a video about that like a million and one ways to wear a white button up that would be that'd be kind of fun um but yeah also another thing with texture like thick sweaters is it can be really bulky especially if you have big boobs maybe you're nursing or something and it is just too much bulk happening in all the wrong places so definitely opt for a thinner sweater material maybe some with a that is a little more streamlined and like has a feminine cut to it, you want to avoid kind of really boxy sweaters and thick, bulky um, wools and knits and things like that. And yeah, just a couple more things to just generally stay away from. Too tight clothes, um, horizontal stripes. It's so hard to pull off horizontal stripes. Um, the French somehow do it well, probably because they're very thin and skinny. But yeah, horizontal stripes are just going to drag out your body. They're going to expand you. Vertical stripes can be okay sometimes too, but eh, I honestly, I don't love them that much. Um, and also like boat necklines, like there's a cut that the French actually like a lot too that kind of goes like this and it really expands that upper body and makes you look much bigger than you are. So those are just things that you could kind of be a little bit wary of um, if you're trying to make yourself look more slim and trim and streamlined. And of course, these are very generalized tips. And that's why I definitely love to work with women one on one so we can really get down to the nitty gritty of like, what are your problem areas? What do you want to highlight? What do you want to um, tuck away a little bit more? And of course, like all those recommendations, like I said, will be in your one on one personalized style guide. And speaking of problem areas, like, yes, you may not love these parts of your body so much right now, but you definitely want to give those areas a little bit of love every day, squeeze your squish, you know, because sending hateful energy to these parts of your body is not going to make this process any more fun. So definitely give yourself a little bit of love every day, maybe do some affirmations. Like some of my favorite affirmations for my body is saying like, I love my body so much. I feel so good in my body today. And just, it may feel silly at first, but after a while, it's gonna start to stick. And of course, this wouldn't be a Halo video without a journal prompt for you guys. So today, the journal prompt is, um, write down for 15 minutes straight in silence, no distractions. And the question is, do I accept my body in its current state? Why or why not? And how can I show my body some extra care right now? What does she need? And then um, I'm also gonna give you guys a little bit of homework and that is what is one way that I can um, accentuate my figure right now? Is it a new belt? Is it a pointy shoe? What can I do to dress for my new delicious lovely body? And I think I'm going to leave it there with you guys. Of course, check out the links in the description box. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.